the past few weeks, we've examined some of the most prominent maps of Black Ops 4, as well as some of the most requested. While some maps have more information than others, we're starting to move into the territory of wrapping up most of the backstory with possibly only a few maps left that have significant info. That said, we still have information to piece together, and in today's deep dive into the secret history of Icebreaker, we'll examine the depths of this map and how it came to be and why it's also important. As always though, I'm greatly intrigued to see who's still interested in this series, and if you enjoy these videos, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's set a like goal of 1500 once again and see what we can do with that, and if you have any map you'd like to see next, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. We're also coming closer to an end than you may think to the backstory, at least on the map side end, so soon we're going to be pushing into unraveling the entire storyline of Black Ops 4 for you and letting you know absolutely every piece that you may have missed. But for now, let's talk about Icebreaker. At first glance, Icebreaker is your stereotypical shipwreck, which is interesting that there's overlap in that regard. Contraband is as well based off a of shipwreck, then later turned into a housing location for a weapons cache and data facility of the many times mentioned drug lord and crime syndicate boss. But what is rather interesting about Icebreaker Icebreaker is the length of the crash, the contents, or lack thereof, in some aspects of the submarine, and icebreaking vessels, as well as who's behind the, if you pay attention to the details, salvaging efforts. Admittedly, this map is probably one that has the least important details right up in your face, as compared to some of the other ones we did before. Some of the biggest clues are some of the biggest items on the map, but most of the map's backstory is actually pieced together from areas that we already know of and have already discussed at length before, it's just a matter of piecing those together to see that bigger picture. But talking about the specific details that you can actually examine in the map initially, there's a few things that give some indications of wit. While you may notice lots of valves and equipment that don't seem to give much information other than Latin placeholder text of Lorem Ipsum, there are a few key locations around Icebreaker that are of importance. The first one that's abundant of them is all the sonar monitors. If you look at the sonar monitors, there's one vessel close and two more approaching or going further away at the outer reaches of its capabilities. The big key part of this is that we have no idea of the time frame. Unfortunately, unlike some assets in other map designs in Black Ops 4, this is a static image placed on a million different monitors around the map, so we have no knowledge of some of the details. Additionally, we don't know of the timing of this. It easily could be the current time that we end up on Icebreaker, playing our regular TDM domination, whatever game mode you're playing. It could be at that point, but it also could be from an attack that happened earlier on, or if we look around the map, the recovery effort on Icebreaker. But again, attack or recovery provides some insight as to the forces, but not necessarily the time, whether that was past or near future. Another thing that you may notice is that in the main submarine, in the upper control room, there's one monitor that has a world map on it, and it's a slightly dynamic theme. It's nothing that gives away too much specific detail, but it's got an AGR in one corner and the label of suspicious activity in the other. The monitor message underneath that seems to be a placeholder and some that you can't make out fully no matter how close you get to it, but it seems the general message is about quartering soldiers and offering safe passage that goes all the way back to colonial times and further on. But the message's first few lines mention the military being authorized to use deadly force and weaponry. So while in the main sub there's not much to do with weaponry, something aggressive is definitely afoot. And that's even further evidenced by the cache of torpedoes in the stockpile near the back hall. These, when examined, are all rusted over, which may point to this being evidence of a crash or attack taking place many moons before the recovery efforts that we see in the backdrop of our normal map. But okay, it's not too out of the ordinary for a vessel of presumably the United States government based upon the flags seen in the various locations around the map, such as the half-sunken server room, and as well the for government use only motorized rafts off in that same spawn. But it's not out of the ordinary for those vessels to have military defensive capabilities, even if it's something for not necessarily an aggressive mission. But what about the plethora of nuclear and radiation icons around the submarine? When you look around, there's no doubt a large trace of radioactive material, which again is something that I guess you could be able to dismiss at first glance as nuclear powered submarines are quite useful to militaries, but also something of a relatively common circumstance in today's times. But what we can't dismiss is the fact that we've heard of radioactive contents before in a few places actually. The first of which that we mentioned here on the channel was from a shipping manifest on contraband that mentioned a nuclear device somewhere in the Arctic region. That manifest was also mirrored on Hacienda and the drug lord and crime boss's office, as it also has importance to the story. Though, as for the asset itself, don't look too far into that, it's legitimately the same asset placed into two locations from the drawing board, but however, there is much more in relation to Icebreaker that we can start to see from that compound and also in relation to the nuclear device. There are notes on the wall of Hacienda that end up saying things like triangulated the location of the missing secret weapon in the Arctic, storing that data in contraband. As well, they sent Ivan, who is a right-hand man of that crime syndicate boss, to provide security to Arctic Wolf and bring back the nuclear weapon. 
weapon. Then, additionally, they end up saying the Arctic Wolf Icebreaker tanker has been under attack when Ivan got there. And finally, they lost contact with Ivan and never got the nuclear weapon delivered. Everything was stolen. So based off the evidence on the map, as well as the evidence from Hacienda, Icebreaker was definitively the location of the nuclear weapon referenced in the shipping manifest. And unfortunately for our crime syndicate boss that we've been following, it was not there when looking to be retrieved. But here's where the timeline gets even more strange from an outside perspective. The events of the map may take place during the initial recovery by the boss's enemy that we see as of the Russian vessel which I had hoped would have given some sort of clarity or some more clues behind who the Russians were working with or the sort of ulterior connections we could piece together, but when translating the Russian text on the vessel itself, it just simply reads Arctic Sail. But what makes me think that this takes place after the icebreaker was under attack and before the note of lost contact with Ivan and that everything was stolen was that we see this crew salvaging things from the icebreaker, one of the most obvious being a nuclear container underneath the crane. And interestingly enough, there's already one at the camp ready to be loaded onto the Russian vessel, but that one remains in the playable map that you can inspect for yourself in game. So whether or not this is the definitive weapon that was in question, it certainly does make a compelling case that it may be. So the Russians who we last saw were funding the Patriots of the North for militia and may be in allegiance with the man with the eye patch, who we knew also as Menendez from the Hacienda board. They may have been the ones to recover this nuclear device and the weapon. So perhaps that nuke is ultimately in the hands of Menendez. Now, here's where my theory starts to interject because we can't confirm the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about, but it's a valid thought. It would not be a surprise to me if Icebreaker then ties into another map, that being the map Payload, as the map has a description officially of, interestingly enough, a defensive ICBM launch facility deep in the Icelandic mountain range has been infiltrated by hostile forces attempting to steal a nuclear warhead. And of course, we've already covered that we've seen the manifest detailing a weapon, not just a device, and what better way to piece it together than it coming from a facility built for ICBMs with nuclear payloads in an area not too far from the Arctic Circle. But let's take this up a notch because that's one thing that may tie into another map, but how about the deeper underlying storyline itself? An interesting theory that I have, because I only noticed this at the very tail end of gathering footage here for this video, is if you examine the camp of the excavation and recovery teams, you'll notice there's some stuff that is being onboarded and offboarded to the Russian vessel. One of which, interestingly enough, has a biohazard label on it. Now, while we have a lot of nuclear and radiation warning icons, strangely enough, there's only one other biological hazard icon in the entire map. But with one hidden away within the submarine itself and seeing one way off in the distance, it's rather hidden away from plain view. But why it's interesting to me is that there's only one biological substance really known to be a problem in the Black Ops universe, and it's one that we've already discussed here on the channel and may very well tie in with the Black Ops 4 story arc as is, that being Nova 6. From the potential makeup to the collapse to various shipping containers on multiple maps that are cryptically labeled with the number 6, would it be really so far-fetched to think that this goes a little deeper than just a nuclear weapon? And it wouldn't be Treyarch without some interesting twist and small detail that 99% of people would miss. Nova 6, while necessarily not too present in Black Ops 3's campaign outside of a small little ending where Kane ends up dying to Nova 6, sorry for the potential spoiler there, and very small references in Black Ops 4, it's something we haven't necessarily seen, which could be open to interpretation in a while, but it is something that could be there trying to, again, tie together Black Ops 1 through 4, which is the ultimate goal, seemingly, of this entire backstory of Black Ops 4. The entire backstory trying to piece together multiplayer zombies, campaign, and now Blackout all into one universe and explain everything that we've gotten so far. Would it be so far-fetched that we see some Nova 6 on Icebreaker? But anyways, what are your thoughts? Because I think there's a lot of open-ended stuff here at this one, especially compared to other maps that we've seen, but it's very interesting to me no less that we can end up seeing this ultimately starting to piece together a little bit more. And again, as we mentioned, we're getting closer to the end of the maps here and the backstories that will have relevant information to what we can see to the overarching Black Ops 4 storyline, but that said, we still have a lot more to discuss in the coming future. One thing that I think that I may be bringing to you guys is the true nature of some of the characters we see, some of the backstories 
is there within that we can take a look at. But that said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, multiplayer, blackout, zombies. We get you covered the best of updates, news, information, tips, tricks, and of course, secret history like this one, piecing together the entire backstory so you know exactly what's going on and where it fits in the Black Ops universe. If you enjoy any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all that. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, there's the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to straight up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But let's say now out of the way. Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.